level up your thumbnail game and make your thumbnails stand out. For this Photoshop tutorial, we're going to take a look at how to make a gaming thumbnail or any type of thumbnail for YouTube using Photoshop. So just like always, we're going to get ourselves a fresh new project. And in here, you want to set it to 1280 times 720. Go ahead and make it transparent and press create. You want to get yourself a screenshot or anything related to the game that we can use for the thumbnail. So for example, I have right here a screenshot from Battlefield 2042 and you pretty much want to left click and drag this into Photoshop. You want to double left click to apply it. And what we want to do now is we want to use a selection tool to separate the person from the background. Now, the one that I always recommend is definitely the pen tool, the one right here. Now, I have a video on my channel to save you some time. And if you don't know how to use it, then watch that video. It will explain it fully. So once you've got yourself the selection, you want to go ahead and press Ctrl and J. We're going to go ahead and press Ctrl and J on our background layer. And you want to hide the one underneath it. Right, so let's start on the very first effect. And this is the one that I am just obsessed with. It is so simple and so cool to create. All you have to do is go to filter at the top, go down to blur, and then go to the one that will say motion blur. But if you set the angle to 45 degrees and then set the distance to 1400, it will create this really cool effect where it's got these rays coming down. And if you press OK, you want to set the opacity to 80% and then unhide the original background so we can still see it. You want to make sure you select in your effect and next up, we're gonna get ourselves a adjustment. So in here, in the half fill circle, get yourself a gradient. With the gradient, you want to click on the color, go into the first color, and then set this to FFC37C, and then press okay. You wanna go into the last color, but you want to go onto the top bit and then set the opacity to 100. Go into the color underneath. You want to click on the color and then set it to D8 and then four zeros. And this gives you this nice red color. Press OK. You want to set the location to 99. Press OK. You want to set the angle to minus 86.54 and then go ahead and press OK. You then want to go into the effect and then set the effect to vivid light. Next up is if you wanted to, you can add yourself some text. So we're going to go to the text tool, left click on the screen and drag this out and then type in your text. The font that I'm using is called Nexa. It's a really cool font. You want to also set the size of the text to basically fill in. And then we're going to drag the corners back in, go into the first tool, you want to go ahead and press Ctrl and J to get yourself a copy of it. With that new layer, you want to hold Shift and then left click and then drag this underneath. With the new one, you want to go back to the text tool, left click on here, press Ctrl and A to select all and then type in thumbnail. So there we go. What you want to do now is you want to go ahead and hold Shift, click on the bottom one of the text layer Go ahead and press Ctrl and J. You want to right click on this one and then convert to a smart object. With the other text layers, you want to hide these ones. Now with the text that we've just copied, you can go ahead and press Ctrl and T. And once you've done that, we're going to scale this down a little bit more. You want to hold Ctrl or Command if you're on a Mac, and then this will let you to play about with the perspective of it. If you wanted to, you can also hold Control and Shift at the same time, and then this will lock it, so you can't go out of it. So yeah, just give it a bit of dimension, and if you wanted to, you can even rotate it, and then double left click to apply it. Once you've got yourself the text, we're gonna go ahead and right click on here, go to Blending Options. So with the Blending Options, you wanna get yourself a gradient and a drop shadow. So with the gradient, you want to go ahead and click on the actual gradient itself. Move this one back to normal. We can delete the middle one. We don't really need that one. Go into the first color, click on here, and then set the color to FFAE46. And then go ahead and press OK. 
For the second color, you want to click on here and then set this to F, 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 and then two more Fs. So it's just a white color. And then go ahead and press OK. Press OK again. And then finally, set the angle to 140. Moving on to the drop shadow, you want to get yourself into here. And then for this one, you want to click on the color and then set the color to 3A1000. Press OK. You want to set the distance on 40 and then the size to 30. You want to go ahead and go down to contour, click on here and then set it to this one right here. And this just makes it really bold and stand out. So you're pretty much done with the blending options. As you can see, we've got the text right here. You can then go ahead and press OK. Right, so next up, we're going to create the battlefield look. And the battlefield look is basically that ray that comes down that looks really cool. So to do that, we're going to go ahead and get yourself the shape tool, get yourself a normal rectangle. You want to minimize this and create yourself a new layer. With that new layer, we're going to left click and drag this out. And you want to get yourself a nice rectangle. With the rectangle, you want to go into the fill, go into the color, and then set it to FF7E00. And then press OK. And this will give you this nice orange color. You can then minimize this. Go into the first tool, press Ctrl and T. And then we're going to hold Shift and then drag the corner and rotate this to about 45 degrees. We're going to put this one right about here. Double left click. You want to make sure this one's above your cutout. And for this one, you just want to get yourself a bunch of copies of it. So press Ctrl and J a few times, press Ctrl and T, and then just resize it. And try to randomize this as much as possible. So some of them make them smaller or thinner. Right, there we go. So now what you want to do is you want to, on each and every one, randomize the opacity. So for the first one, let's set this one to 90. Let's set the second one to 80, let's say, and then we'll go to, let's say 60. And now once you've done that, you want to hold shift, click on the bottom one, right click on here, convert to a smart object. So this will collapse them all together. And once you've done that, we're going to go ahead and also press Ctrl and J, press Ctrl and T, and then move this above here. You want to hold shift, click on the bottom one, right click on here, and then convert to a small object. So same as last time, we're going to go back to the motion blur effect and you want to go to filter, go down to blur and go to motion blur. Now for this one, you want to leave it on 45 degrees for the angle and then set the distance to 1359. You want to go ahead and press OK. You want to get yourself the motion blur one more time. Go to filter, blur, and then motion blur. Set the angle to minus 39 and then the distance to 30. Go ahead and press OK. So what we need to do now is we need to hold control or command, left click on the person to get yourself the selection. You want to click on the person, get yourself a new layer. With that new layer, we're gonna to go to the brush tool, set the size to about 800 pixels. You wanna set it to zero percent for the hardness. And then the color that you want to get is going to be FF7E00. So same as last time. Press OK. Once you've done that, you want to then go ahead and just simply paint this on, making sure you select in the correct layer. You then want to go ahead and press Ctrl and D, go into the first tool, and then go up to the effect and then set this to overlay. And there we go. Now we also want to go back onto the rays and then set this to 65 for the opacity, making them a little bit more thinner. Now with the color rays, you just want to right click on here go to blended options. And if you wanted to, you just need to play about with the color to get it just right. So if you wanted to, we could set it to FF and then 6000. And this will give us a different type of orange. So once you're happy with it, you know, you'll know which color is right. And then press okay. Next up, what we'll want to do is we want to get ourselves the adjustments. 
and you want to get yourself a brightness and contrast. You want to set the brightness to 64 and then the contrast to 33. You can then minimize this. And you also want to get yourself back into here and get yourself a hue and saturation and then set the saturation to 23 and then minimize this. So you want to get yourself the brush tool. You want to create yourself a new layer above all of these other layers. Get yourself the brush tool and set it to about, let's say 2000, something like this. Get yourself a white color and then just highlight the edge. And then finally in the effects, go onto here and then set this one to overlay. And there we go. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, give it a thumbs up. Let me know what you thought of this thumbnail. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. I have more Photoshop tutorials and editing videos. And yeah, I will see you all in my next video. Bye. <laughs>